First, on behalf of Women for Women USA, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. Today we are here to speak for the women of Bangladesh, to speak against the torture that they are suffering through. And we will have some speakers who will go through the things that are happening there and our involvement in that situation. So to start off, we have Sister Rashida Ali from Masjid al-Taqwa. Yes, assalamu alaikum, good, good morning actually. I am here representing my Muslim sisters from Bangladesh who have gone under undescribable punishment for only wanting to be Muslims. Your Excellency General Bach Ki Moon from the UN, we appeal to you to stand firm against these atrocities that women of all kind should be allowed to practice their religion, their faith, and their culture in the manner that which they were taught. No one should suffer for their beliefs. Women should not have to disclose themselves, unclose themselves for the pleasure of men. They should be able to stand firm for their Lord without re repercussions. In Bangladesh, this new government has no right to destroy women. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Stand firm for what the United States is supposed to believe and go and do for our Bangladeshi women, Muslim women, what they desire. Peace, education, and a good life. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. Now we have Sister Sharman Haq from LIU to speak some more. Assalamu alaikum. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. So when we have 20 women unlawfully arrested and harassed by police officers, alarms should be going off in our heads. Any government that arrests and tortures people for no just cause is not one who particularly believes in the rule of law, justice, and human rights. The Bangladesh Islamic Chapter Shansta is an approved organization in which students, female students in particular, impart their Islamic knowledge. They're just normal girls like you and me. They're not a criminal organization and they're not a terrorist organization. While questioning them, the police treated them as if they were animals. Tortured in various ways, they were forced to remove their veil. They're being kept in custody in a small police station where they have not been fed regularly, nor have they been allowed to see their families. Tell me, and how, how in any way is that okay for them to be treated like this? The current government is hell-bent upon removing anyone with traces to an Islamist organization, and Muslims around a Muslim-majority country are being persecuted. And this increased number of persecutions and arrests is just revealing their plans. But why are they targeting young women all of a sudden? Because this government knows that it will not stay for long. And who will bring it down? Educated female activists. Women have always been a threat to repressive governments because a united female front is just what it takes to bring down tyrants such as the government of Bangladesh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our intellect to use for good. So I'm urging my fellow women here today, think about your mothers, daughters, and even yourselves being placed in this position. How would they feel? Scared, alone, hungry, emotionally and physically bruised. Can we imagine? This is why I'm asking you all here today to please raise our united voices together against the Bangladeshi government's recent inhuman behavior and join the ongoing revolution. For it is a united female front that is a force to be reckoned with. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Now we will have Sadia Reza, a student from Queens College, speaking for the students that are suffering this brutality in Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. So I think that we speak for all our Muslim sisters when we stand here before you all condemning the atrocities against our fellow sisters in Bangladesh. When, like Sharman said, when 
when you target any Muslim woman anywhere, you, when you target any woman anywhere, you're targeting all women everywhere. The incident has shown that the Bangladesh government has reached pretty much a new height of inhumanity. What has been going on has been going on for too long. And what kind of despicably shameful government has it become when it can now target completely innocent young female students for absolutely no justifiable reason whatsoever and subject them to torture? These women were not out in the streets riding against the government. These women were not spreading propaganda or hate or committing treason against the government. They were not planning any heinous actions against them or anyone or any political agenda whatsoever. They were simply gathering, gathering students to discuss Islam. They were simply wearing the hijab, practicing their right to modesty and practicing their religion. And that is the only charge that the government even has of them. The same right that Alhamdulillah we are capable of practicing here now have been denied our Muslim sisters in Bangladesh. What renders this governmental action to be even worse is the fact that they are not only perpetrating this, but attempting to justify this action. Thus, I beseech the UN to take action against the very thing that they stand against, injustice. We ask the UN to take action and free those, these innocent women held by the Bangladeshi government. We ask them to grant them their freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and above all, their freedom of the right to a peace of mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we will have Sister Shahana Masoom. She is a social worker for the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and she is also the president of Women for Women USA. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and most merciful, we are here gathered in front of the United Nations. United Nations built for the right and for the human dignity for the all in this earth. So we are happy being here and we want to raise our voice that still is 19, uh, 2000, 2012, 2013 is around the corner that women still being undermined and second class and women been treating less than the human and less than the animal sometime. And this is the same thing happening in, on the earth. And we can't quiet and we can't sit back. It's no matter which country, which nation, any woman, any woman been um, undermined and giving them the second class. And women revolution keeps coming. It's gonna become more and more and more, but we don't want that. We want reestablish women right on this surface. So today we are here for, especially for Bangladesh government and Bangladeshi women. Unfortunately, I'm here in front of the United Nations. We are proud when we see a rep representative or any nation has women leader. We women feel very happy, but today we are shamed. We are shamed because Bangladesh government has most, one of the most women leaders the present government, prime minister woman, and different minister is the woman, but look at it, how they're treating their own people. Shame and shame and shame. I don't want to carry this shame. We do not want to carry this shame. Because if woman comes to the power because of the so many other women devotion, and when you are in a power, you do not treat anyone, not women, men, and children, or any life in this world, unhumanly. So today we are here, this is the eve of Christmas. And we all know what it is the Christmas. Most of the believer in this nation, they believe there is the birth of the Jesus. And I'm gonna talk about the, little bit about the Mary. When, as a Muslim, I call her Maryam. She is my role model. Uh, we all love her. We, this is a part of our faith to love her. We respect her. And the Quran respect her so highly and honor her. And I want to bring that honor. How the Maryam was persecuted by those time the leaders. The same thing happening to the Bangladeshi woman in Bangladesh. So I'm here in front of the United Nations. And I also want to tell the, our honorable, respectable Ban Ki-moon 
please, please reestablish the woman right. And we shouldn't be only keep it as a celebration. We should be bringing the woman justice and honor and dignity and we restore it. As we can see in Bangladesh, it's not happening only just today. It's been happening quite long. In the name of the woman power, they are misusing the power. The women are being killed, hanged, worse than the animal. You can see these pictures by the Bangladeshi Aumili government presently. And I'm so shocked to see how these women leaders in Bangladesh, they are still is quiet and they are happy and what is going on and they're supporting it when it's against the woman. Every single woman in this earth, there should be voice. They should be say to the Bangladesh government, Hasina and her whole woman crew and man crew, do not act like a tyranny man. You are the shame and you are dishonoring our woman, right, woman dignity. And this is the time the same thing happened, what happened to Mariam the Mary during her time. She was a young woman. She was a late teenager or a very young woman. The same thing happened presently in Bangladesh. There's a student being arrested. What, what was their wrong and what was their fault doing? Because they are the pure woman, like a Mariam. And today, because of they're so pure, they're religious, they don't want to assimilate any wrong thing. They want to bring the nice and uh, very um, nurturing way and the parenting way their children. And they're calling people to the good, which is this Islam, but they're being arrested without any notice because they were having a ceremony. Anybody has to have a right to pray. Anybody has to have their right to have their own ceremony. But these girls, this young woman, they've been arrested. Have you ever heard in this earth, this woman been arrested like that without any notice and they put them in prison. And they are not in the prison only. There is one woman, she's pregnant. She needs food and nutrition. And everybody know, I think this is the worst thing, the pregnant woman treating like that. And she's in the jail. She's not getting her necessity, any right. Not even a food. Because her parents said in front of the media that they, they gave her only the dry bread. She's a pregnant woman. She's a carrying a Bangladeshi child. Who gonna be a Bangladeshi? Future. And that, what is her wrong? Her wrong doing only thing because she was with the sermon with her own, her, her own group people. And they are the only the activists among the uh, students. And they are a legal organization. Government legalized them. That's why they organized this student body. As the American citizen and American land, we all know that every single student, we are here. All these students, we need to be you know, part of a club and part of any organization that's called activism. And activism comes from our education. And we are implementing, these girls are implementing their education. And that was their fault. They want to build Bangladesh very nicely, precisely. And all bring the honor and dignity we can see what's going on. But today, we are so ashamed that our Bangladeshi government they arrested them and put them, and they don't even, even getting their due process to bring these innocent girls out. We are also parents. We are not only activists, we are also parents. And we know how feel when our, these daughters been putting in a jail. They are not only in a putting in a jail, they are in a concentration. And they've been abused mentally, physically, and socially and their psychological trauma is horrible and horrible and horrible what is up now we should be stand up and i'm requesting mr ban ki moon our honorable respected secretary general that please look after it take action let the bangladesh government they cannot persecute this woman and woman has to have 
a honor and dignity and they should be out from the jail immediately what do you think sister yes yeah. we want their freedom right now right now we want them to out from jail right now right now and also we want those governmental corruption uh, system who put them inside them in inside their inside the jail so inshallah we want to request all the media and others please voice your raise your voice and express our feeling and anywhere any this surface is happen this is wrong happening it's not only that bangladesh government also against the media the women media that the lady women media been killed and no one nothing happened unfortunately this government heads are mostly women so we are asking all our people please come up and tell the bangladesh government they cannot continue like that they better stop it because this don't make women angry don't make women to take the real charge then all of you going to be in trouble and we can see in the history don't let the women can do so much women are not the women can do so much than others so my respected sisters and the people been here please raise your voice and we are here we submitted our voice and united nation do your action as soon as possible thank you very much thank you very much now we're going to have a student from Stuyvesant high school tahora mahmoodli hagul Assalamu alaikum. Imagine this. You're a college student. It's three in the afternoon and you're sitting in the office of a student organization at your campus. Suddenly the doors swing open, a group of policemen flood in, and before you know it, your office is trashed and you're being arrested and de detained without definite charges. They don't tell you why you're being arrested or, or how long you'll be detained. Frightening, isn't it? This was the reality for 21 female students on December 16th when policemen suddenly raided their student organization office and arrested them for no apparent reason. What did the policemen find in their raids? A couple of books, a Quran, and some computers? Certainly not enough to warrant them to arrest and detain 21 innocent girls. We are gathered here today because it frightens us. Those girls that have been arrested could have easily been any of us. Why did, what did they do to deserve this? The current government in Bangladesh has been jailing and detaining all of its political enemies on flimsy charges, and now it dares to go after innocent women. A couple of books, Quran, and some computers were all that was fine, found. It does not justify their arrest in the least. It's shameful that this raid happened on December 16th, the day in 1971 when, the, when Bangladesh finally gained its freedom from Pakistan. We didn't fight for our independence. We did, we did not fight for the independence of a country so it can jail our women on indefinite charges. Three million people sacrificed their lives in the Bangladeshi Liberation War. For what? So we can have a country in which innocent people live in fear of baseless raids and warrantless arrests? It, it's also a shame that a country that is part of the United Nations can commit such atrocities. The arrest of female students is only one of the things that the current government has done. But this act alone violates the Universal Declaration of Human Rights set forth by the United Nations. We urge the United Nations to take action because this government, in its quest for a secular state, is clearly violating the rights of these women. We ask the United Nations for their help in these desperate times. It is clear that the opposition is being silenced one by one as the current Bangladeshi government packs the jails with opposing po parties' political leaders. Now they're targeting innocent women as well and robbing them of their rights. 21 women held in prison without committing a single crime. We ask the United Nations to be the judge of this crime and help restore to Bangladesh the freedom, peace, and safety that three million Bangladeshi people bled for in 1971. Thank you very much. Now we will have Meher Nayar from City College of Technology. Assalamu alaikum all my brothers and sisters here. 
And we all know that why we are here about the woman right, which is a part of human rights. We all know that. And those sisters who are arrested there, they might be our sister, they might be our daughter, they might be our mother. The youngest one is there was 19 years old and the oldest one was 45 years old. Like our mom's age. How can you feel that? When the people, they're arrested for without any reason, without any punishment, like they're getting punishment, they didn't do anything wrong there. Just the learning about the, about the teaching of Allah and they're just sharing with each other, their thought. That's their fault only there. And those sisters belong to the, the well-known universities there. From the, some are from medical school, some are from dental, some are from engineering school. And they're just, they're just getting the punishment there and we don't know even what's happening there with them. And we all know that the one of them was pregnant, the five and a half month old, and she was dragged to the court all the way to the eighth floor. She was asking for help to take the elevator to the eighth floor. They didn't even let them to take the elevator. So imagine how much suffering they're going through now. Their brother and sister here, please, please come and support this suffering sister for the sake of God and for the sake of the human rights. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Now we're going to have Sadia Ruman from John Jay College. Assalamualaikum, my name is Sadia. I would just like to say, I mean, I don't want to readdress what they just said. I would just like to say that it's sad how these females were arrested for all the wrong reasons. Bangladesh sings about freedom. Just the day before, they were singing about freedom, how like it's such a free country. You can, like, they always have advertisements showing that like people are allowed to like practice whatever they want. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and everything. But when it comes to Islamic stuff, Bangladesh always oppresses the females. And like, it's, can you hear me now? Um, it's just, it's really sad because like we can't seem to practice what we what what the eighty four percent of what the majority of us are. Majority is, is the Muslims and like yeah we can't even like, wear the hijab like like freely out in the public just for practicing Islam. We're like if we have to be arrested for it. I just especially I feel sad for the lady. She's she's the same age as my younger sister. She's only nineteen and like to imagine if my sister was in her position, I would just. I would probably break. Like, like the whole scenario is just horrible. And in, like, I just I'm making dua for them, inshallah. And I hope the rest of you are too. That like, you know, like Allah helps them, and like nothing happens to these women, inshallah. Thank you. Now we will have Maryam Tanzila from Fordham University. I am here to speak on behalf of the sisters who have been arrested recently. And for what? Simply for speaking the words of Allah in their weekly halakas. In that case, I too and my fellow sisters who are participating in weekly halakas would fall victim to Bangladesh the unjust ways. Before in Bangladesh, people feared to let their fathers out in the street, their brothers out in the street, their sons out in the street. But now, it is no longer safe for our mothers, sisters, and daughters. Here in the U.S., a non-Muslim country, we enjoy more freedom to practice our religion. In America, you need some sort of probable cause to arrest someone. Unfortunately, this is not the case in Bangladesh. Under Bangladesh's criminal procedure law, section 54, the government can arrest someone under suspicion but cannot give them what is called a remand to torture and interrogate them. These girls are also supposed to be given bail, another right that they have been deprived of. It is obvious that Bangladesh is violating its own cost constitutional laws. All the women who are arrested are now kept in a small room together with no food, no water or blankets and are forced to use the bathroom in the corner of the room. The ways they are being tortured is unimaginable. 
the Bangladesh government have repeatedly violated international human rights. These arrests and the tribunal itself is a joke to the international community. What we need most is for the international community to act and to make dua for our brothers and sisters in Bangladesh around the world and around the world. The Prophet Muhammad said, when, he, when we see injustice and when we see oppression, the, we have to stop it with our tongue. And when that doesn't work, we have to stop it with our hands. And when that doesn't work, we have to hate it in our heart and make dua for our innocent brothers and sisters in Bangladesh and the rest of the world. Jazakumullah khair for having me here. Thank you. Now we will have Feroz Akhtar from Hunter College. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My dear sisters, you all are welcome today here in the United States. We are not supposed to be here today. Why we are here today? When the whole world is trying to establish human rights, when the whole world is trying to give the women their rights, but our beloved country Bangladesh, they are violating the human rights. Dear sisters today, we all know that our sisters, our innocent sisters and 21 sisters in Bangladesh got arrested by our prime minister who is also an woman. My dear sisters, we all know that when the murderers should be punished for their killing, but our prime minister is, you know, releasing them and keeping them away, I mean, away from the punishment, but the innocent sisters are getting punished. Innocent brothers are getting punished. My dear sisters, the whole world is trying to give the human rights, but what is our prime minister doing? They are trying to put our moms in jails, our sisters in jails, our pregnant sisters in jails, where she is a woman and she knows that what is the rights for the pregnant lady. She knows that what should a pregnant lady get treated, but she is not doing that. We know that the United States have established for, the, for ensuring the peace and human rights, but why we are here in front of the United States today to tell against our country's prime minister that as a woman she shouldn't do that, but she is doing that. This is injustice. This is totally, you know, torture for our sisters. My dear sisters, we all should pray for our sisters and we all should say that no, we should stop that. Our country, should, our country, you know, the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina should stop that. They are trying to suppose those girls who are actually doing bad works. They are trying to give in shelter those boys who are killing other people, who are raping the girls. But they are trying to put the innocent girl who are trying to do something good for the nations, they are putting them in jails. We know that Bangladesh Islamic Chhati Shansa, you know, it's an organization who is trying to build up a good nations. It's an organization who is trying to build up the character for the girls, for the students. This is an organization who is working for the peace, for building a good nation. We know this Napoleon said that, give me an ideal nation, I'm going to give you an ideal, give me an ideal mom, I'm going to give you an ideal nation. And Bangladesh Islamic Chhati Shansa is working to try to build up a good nation. But unfortunately, those who are not working for, you know, for building the good nations, they are being treated well with the, by our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. But those who are working for the wellness of our country, they are not being treated. What is their problem? What is their, uh, uh, what, is our, uh, what is the fault of our sisters? They are wearing hijab. They are working for the Islam. They are trying to do something good for us. That's not good in the eyes of our country prime ministers. So That's so sad for us that we are here, we are in a, you know, a non-Muslim country, but here we have the rights to tell our, uh, what we should do and what we can do. But as a Muslim country, our Prime Minister, who is also a Muslim, unfortunately, and she's not letting us do what we should do. And as a Muslim girl and as a Bangladeshi American, I would like to request that leaders of the United Nations, please stop trying to, you know, try to stop these violations and take initiation to stop this, to stop this violation. I would like to request our country, you know, Prime Minister, the Sheikh Hasina, you are a woman, please learn how to treat a pregnant woman. You were a mom and try to know how to treat a mom. You are a mom, you should know how to be treated a pregnant lady, how she should eat. And where our sisters in the jail, they are not getting
getting the treatment, they are not getting the foods, they are not getting the blankets in such kind of cold weather. And we all know that they are trying to make them bounce to, you know, take off their kneecaps in, the, in, in front of the man where they are not supposed to do. I would like to request you sisters, please come forward, raise your voice, talk to for your sisters. You could, you, you never know, you could be the same person. You never know that your sister could be there. Maybe, maybe no one is there, your sisters, but you should feel that. Imagine yourself in such kind of situation. Imagine yourself as a, as a pregnant lady and never getting food. Imagine yourself that you are there without the uh, blankets in such kind of cold weather. Please come forward, raise your voice for those sisters and try to stop these violations. And uh, thank you everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't forget to make du'as for those sisters who are actually getting tortured and getting punished. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you very much. Probably the biggest irony in all this is that, as she mentioned, the Prime Minister, the leader of Bangladesh is a woman. She is a mother. She is a wife. However, it's under her rule that not only is this going on, but she is causing for this to go on. Does she not understand the basic human rights that should be given to not just a human, but a woman? But again, you know, she's allow she's not allowing for this to happen. That's one thing. But she's causing for it to happen. So I beseech the United Nations to please, please look into this. Please take action against these people. These people that are treating other humans, that are treating women in such a way that never in the history has this happened to women before, especially pregnant women being denied these basic rights. Now we will have Salma Afroz speaking a few words. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, বন্দেরকে মুসলিম বন্দেরকে আজকে বাংলাদেশে যেভাবে টর্চার করছে তার প্রতিবাদ জানানোর জন্য আমরা জানি যে বাংলাদেশে আমাদের কিছু ইনোসেন্ট বোন মা যাদেরকে বাসা থেকে ঘর থেকে টেনে নিয়ে গিয়েছে এবং সেখানে প্রেগন্যান্ট রোগী বোন আছে যাদেরকে আজকে জেরে পুরে রিমাইন্ডের মতো নিয়ে গিয়েছে মানবতার এই রকম লঙ্ঘন এই রকম অপমান মায়ের জাতির কোনো ইতিহাসে আছে কিনা আমার জানা নেই তো আমি প্রতিবাদ জানাতে এসেছি যে একটা মা একটা আদর্শ মা দাও একটা আদর্শ নেশন আমি তোমাদেরকে দেব তো এই যে মা যেই মায়েরা গডকে বিশ্বাস করে আল্লাহকে বিশ্বাস করে যে মায়েরা আদর্শ জাতি তৈরি করার জন্য চেষ্টা করছে সেই মায়েদেরকে আজকে যেভাবে নির্যাতন চালানো হচ্ছে এর তীব্র প্রতিবাদ জানানোর জন্য আজকে এখানে আসছি জাতিসংঘের কাজ সামনে জাতিসংঘের কাছে আমার অনুরোধ আমাদের অনুরোধ পৃথিবীর যেখানেই এই মা বোনদের উপর অত্যাচার তারপরে জুলুম নেমে আসবে প্লিজ আপনারা বন্ধ করার জন্য চেষ্টা করুন আমরা তার তীব্র প্রতিবাদ জানিয়ে আমি এখানে শেষ করছি আসসালামু আলাইকুম আহমদুল্লাহ Thank you. Now we have Sister Nusrat Lima from NYIT. Assalamu alaikum everyone. The objective here for today's gathering is regards to young females, just like many of us here, who are being tortured for not being able to freely exercise their religion. We live in a modern society and we would expect we have these basic liberties to exercise our free religion. Our religion. This is a problem that cannot be dismissed. It is a rather problem that we should stand up and acknowledge. I urge every Muslims and non-Muslims and the United Nations to stand up and be the voice for sisters that are locked up and are tortured for no valid reason. And that's all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. So now we have Sister Tasnia Hena. In the name of the only one, the most beneficent, the most gracious. The women for women are here to speak up. Speak up against the oppression, speak up against the violation of the human rights in Bangladesh. You know what happened in Bangladesh? In Bangladesh, there are 20 female students wearing hijab including one woman sister. There are 21 altogether who have been arrested only for practicing their religion, practicing the legal organization. 
And you know, over there, one woman was pregnant. I know how sufferings, how mental exhaustion you go through when you are pregnant. I have a four months old baby right here, and I went through all the stress and sufferings. And that woman, sister over there, has been arrested in the prison without any fault. She has been arrested for no reason. And you know, you have learned how much sufferings she has been going through right now. She has been going through the stress, the trauma, and the extra operation over there. We are speaking up against those violations. You know that there are 80% of Muslim over there, and this is a shame that the government of Bangladesh is torturing those women who are learning, who are the students over there. This is a shame. We will speak up all over the world, wherever there is this operation, wherever there is the violation, women for women are here to speak up against those violations. I will remind you a hadith of our messenger. If there are an oppressor and there is an oppressed, if we cannot do anything, at least we can speak up against the oppressed, oppression one. And that's how we will speak up here. And I will humbly request, request the chairperson Ban Ki-moon Please let the Bangladeshi government know to stop this violation, to stop this aggression, to stop this violation against the human rights. Let the people practice their religion, let the, pra let the people practice their general works and everything. People are so oppressed over there. They cannot lead their regular life over there. So many students, so many female students, they are so scared to go outside in the street. Because you don't know the Bangladeshi government, how they are arresting people over there, torturing without any reason. You know, one gentleman was arrested over there, and now his wife has been arrested. Feel how the family is going through. They are little children, they are, uh, they are at home without any supervision. That's how our government is doing over there. So we will request the chairperson and we will request all the women, every, all over the world, to speak, uh, speak up against this violation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Tasnia Kushum. Now uh, may I have Sumaya, Sumaya Tawassum here from City College. I just want to say that United States is a secular country and we have no problem practicing our religion. Whether we're Christian, we're Muslim, we're Jewish, we're Hindu, we're Buddhist, like I ride the train every day and I can read my Quran, I can read like Hadith. I see Christian people reading their Bible, I see Jewish people reading their Torah and I don't see a police officer coming to them and arresting them. And I want to say I go to a big university and we have a whole floor dedicated to Muslims to pray. So I don't understand why in Bangladesh like if you pray you get arrested if you like wear hijab like you get stripped like that's just disgusting and this is a female in charge this is not a man in charge a female stripping other females that's really nasty and how do you expect men to respect you like I really don't understand that and I don't think Bangladesh wants to follow any Islamic countries and I don't have a problem with that if you want to be like the West if you want to be like New York City the capital of the world if you want to be Western try to give people human rights try to like follow their examples like okay I may not agree with everything here but I agree with a lot of things here like human rights like like honestly I support you to be Western like I support you to be like giving people human rights like you're not doing anything you're for yourself you're not being Western you're not being Islamic you're not being anything you're just going down the drain and this is not gonna end well for anybody this isn't gonna end well for the government this isn't gonna end well for us this isn't gonna end well for anybody so stop oppressing people stop like treating everyone bad like this is gonna end ugly 
and I hope like Allah guides you like I hope Allah guides you and I hope you learn something from this like the Bangladeshi government and like I hope this ends well for everybody thank you thank you very much um, now we're going to have Farzana Ahmed from Bernard Bernard College Assalamu alaikum wa ala Sayyidin Mursaleen, Muhammadin ya sabihi ajma'in, bi rahmatik ya rahim rahimin. Um, but all praises belong to Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. John F. Kennedy once said that the rights of every man are diminished once the rights of one man are threatened. President, F, President John F. Kennedy was indeed an intuitive and clever man of his time, but his words continue to linger amongst us amongst the oppressed, because oppression is neither a foreign nor a new predicament for any rising nation. It is imperative to note, however, that historically, totalitarianism, which also appears to be the current political system in our motherland, is unfortunately justified by individuals who originally promised to care for the welfare of a nation upon reception of power. But once they are in rule, they desire to obtain absolute power over a nation by controlling all aspects of private and public life of civilians. How can you claim to care for the well-being and happiness of a nation, but all again were not provided to me by the government, they were provided me to by Allah. Bangladesh may be a third world country, I may just be one New Yorker, but it is our job, Mr. Representative of the United Nations, to address these human rights violations. The United Nations was established to maintain international peace, but the Middle East has over 10, has had over 10 revolutions in the last few years. Are you really maintaining international peace or the peace in Europe and America solely? And I will end with one verse from the Quran, uh, verse 75 of Surah An-Nisa. And what is the matter with you, that you fight not in the cause of Allah and for the oppressed, oppressed among men, women, and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of the city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us yourself a helper. We will no longer tolerate the oppression. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have Nasrin Kohli. Assalamu alaikum, Shanmanito, Bonera, Aske Amra Ekineshi, United Nations Shamne, Amra Shabai Jani, Jamras Kekiniki Junoeshi. Amake Shorum Kori did Che, Shekubi Chotovala Kothamake Bolti Hoche because Ami Aske J. Bonera Aske Jelly Gietche. এবং যে মায়েরা গিয়েছে তাদের ফ্যামিলির কথা স্মরণ করে আমাকে এই কথাটা এজন্যই বলতে হচ্ছে বিকজ আমি যখন 2 এবং 3 ইয়ার্স ওল্ড ছিলাম তখন কিন্তু আমার মাকে একদিন জেলে যেতে হয়েছিল আমি কোনোদিন কাউকে বলিনি কিন্তু আজকে আমাকে খুবই বলতে হচ্ছে কারণ আমি জানি যে একটা 2 থেকে 3 বছরের বাচ্চা যখন ব্রেস্ট ফিডিং করে সেই বাচ্চা যখন মায়ের দুধ না পায় তখন তার কি রকম পরিস্থিতি হতে পারে আমাদের অনেক বোনেরাই ওখানে আজকে জেলে আছে এবং আমাদের মায়েরাও আছে এবং তাদের ফ্যামিলির সবাই কিন্তু আজকে সবাই তারাও কিন্তু এই সমস্যার সম্মুখীনই আছেন কারণ আমার মা জেলে গিয়েছিলেন আমার ভাইয়ের জন্য কিন্তু এর জন্য পুরো ফ্যামিলিকে কিন্তু সেদিন সাফার করতে হয়েছিল আজকে যে বোনেরা আমার জেলে আছে এজন্য আমাকে বলতে হচ্ছে প্লিজ আমরা জাস্ট ইন ইউনাইটেড নেশনের সামনে আসছি আমাদের বোনকে 24 আওয়ার্স এর মধ্যে তাদেরকে ছেড়ে দেওয়া হোক এটাই আমার রিকোয়েস্ট বিকজ আমি জানি যে মায়ের দুধ ছাড়া এবং একটা মা ছাড়া একটা ফ্যামিলির কি পরিস্থিতি হতে পারে প্লিজ বানকি মোরকে আমরা সবাই রিকোয়েস্ট করছি প্লিজ আপনি আমাদেরকে এই হেল্পটুকু করুন 24 আওয়ার্স এর মধ্যে আমি চাই আমাদের সব বোনরা যেন জেল থেকে বের হয়ে আসে so, I'm asking you to call and I can on a much to the street in Kota economy. Prison about police can copy what I buy. I'm in China, but the next generation of Kuno buy a bong bonnet at the shunt and the police about pigeon keep boy pack, jasmine keep boy pack. I don't have a market joy mark, jealousy. I'm going to show me a micro no bells winning court the party. So, please, as guy can I'm a shop. I get down at the upper, please, I'm on a bond. Thank you, Amara. Thank you for your touching speech. 
Um, I'm supposed to make the closing statement, but I just hope that just because this is the closing statement, this is not the close. This is not the end. There is still a long way to go and a lot to be done. This is only a continuation. It's not the beginning and it's not the end. And as you've heard from all these, from all these speakers, these students, these mothers, these sisters, these daughters, these wives, you've heard what's going on. And you know what we want. We beseech the UN. We beseech the UN to take a step in this. As we know, as we've heard growing up in these schools, in this education system, we're taught from an early age an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So let's not just wait and, you know, wait in our homes, turn off the TVs, turn off the news channels, and just wait for this to pass. It will not pass without us speaking against it at least, at the very least, without us taking action against it. These horrors will continue, and before we know it, it will touch us. And then we will want somebody to speak for us. So for somebody to speak for us, we need to speak against for the, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves right now. We need to speak for those 21 women who are being held without a reason. They were taken to court and still, there was still no reason given for their arrest. Why were they arrested? Just because they are practicing their faith. Bangladesh is a rising nation. They are trying to rise. They were independent in 1971, and from then, they are trying to rise. They are trying to become an impacting country with a place in the world. But this cannot happen when these atrocities are occurring. How can a nation rise when you are taking the student body, when you are taking the future, the mothers, the students, the teachers, the future lawyers, the future doc doctors, when you are taking them, you're putting them into the jails. You're not giving them their basic human rights. How can a nation progress when you are doing this? It cannot. The step to progression is to eliminate the injustices that we are aware of and to find the injustices that we are not aware of and to resolve them and to solve them, to ask for help when we need it. And we are asking for help because we need it. We want these women to be freed. They're being held without a reason. It could easily have been any one of us, but alhamdulillah, thanks to God that we are here, living in a nation that has given us so many blessings, so many rights, so many opportunities. If we had not been given that opportunity, we may have very well been there. We may have been those women that are currently there suffering, but we are not, so we have to speak on behalf of them. Not as women, not as students, not as Muslims, but as human beings. Bangladesh is known for you know, trying to become a democracy. But living in a democracy, we are, we are taught from a very young age that we have the freedom of speech, we have the freedom of liberty, uh, the freedom to pursue happiness. We know that when somebody is accused of something, they are innocent until proven guilty. But this is all contrary to what is happening there. These women, they have no charges against them, yet they are being held as guilty until they find something to hold them, hold them against. How is that following the model for democracy? How is that progressing towards a democ being a democratic nation? It's not. Where is the freedom of religion? Where is the freedom of speech? Where is the freedom of press when these are all being censored? When because somebody is practicing their faith, something that we have the privilege of doing in this, this blessed country, and they are being denied these basic rights, these rights not given by a country, not given by a president, not given by a prime minister, these basic rights given by God. How can you oppress those who are just trying to live their life? How can you oppress a mother or a pregnant woman who, who just wants the future of her child to be bright, who is working for the progress of a nation in which her child is going to grow up? How can you deprive her of these things that we here take for granted? of these things that are right for every human being. You cannot say that we are a country, a rising country, striving for democracy, when the very leaders of this, you know, country striving for democracy, when the very leaders are committing actions that are very much similar to that of a totalitarian state.
You cannot. It cannot coexist. You cannot say that you want a democracy when you are doing the very things that are the basic things that a totalitarian state would do. These things cannot coexist. In order for my nation, for my country, for my homeland to progress, and to my country not, the United States, they need to solve these injustices. They need to disband them. They need to take away the power from those who are abusing the power, who are imprisoning people without charges. All this time, they are taking, they are taking the men and they are torturing the men. But they see that, you know, the people of Bangladesh are better than that. They are not being convinced that these innocent people are guilty of the things that they are charged of being and without proof too. So now what are they doing? They are taking the women. They are taking the leaders of the nation. They are taking the glue that keeps the family together. These 21 women, they come from families. You take these 21 women away, you're not only hurting them. You're hurting the families they come from. You're hurting all of humanity. So I beseech, I beseech the United Nations to please, please look into this. Please help us. We need your help. Again, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we do not want any threat to our justice system. Again, I want to thank everyone here for taking their time out in this cold weather to speak for these women.